Well, welcome back. Hopefully you're in that holiday spirit. Just a few days left to go before our holiday break. Our topic today is probability, and this time, instead of the word exactly, we're going to focus on the words at least and at most. All right, so it's a little different from yesterday, but it involves the same formula. Now, before I dive right in, we really have to talk about the words at least. All right, so let's say your mom tells you that she's going to give you at least $5 today. You did your chores, whatever. You're going to get at least $5 today. And you get home from school and she decides to give you $2. Is that right? I mean, she just said she was going to give you at least five. Would it be fair for her to give you two? Well, hopefully you're saying, heck no. At least means I have to get this amount at least. At that, it should be the lowest amount I get. But let's say you went home and she said, hmm, you know, great job today. I'm going to give you $10 instead. Would that be fair? And hopefully you're thinking, yes, basically I have to get $5 or more. All right. So next to the word at least, we're going to say kind of or more. All right. You have to get at least that number or more. Let's tweak it and say at most. All right, if your mom said the most she was going to give you is $10, that's the most. All right, if that's the most, you can't have more than that. If the most she was going to give you is $10, now you might be happy, but would it be right for her to give you $20? Well, again, you might be happy about it, but the answer would be no. The most you can have is $10. That means you could have $10 or less. Okay, so it kind of goes in the opposite direction. When you see the most, you can actually have that number or smaller. And when you have at least, you can have that number or greater. So those are the two ideas. If you get those two ideas down, um, the math behind it today isn't very difficult. All right, so let's look at our first problem. Very similar to yesterday. A family consists of three children. What is the probability that at most two of the children are boys? Okay, so basically from yesterday to today, all we did is tweak the word exactly to at most. So here's how we're going to attack this problem. We're going to set it up just like it was an exactly problem. NCR, success to the R, failure to the N minus R. But then we'll add on to it a little bit. All right, so what is the total number, and we're talking children. The total number of children is three. We're looking for at most two. Okay, so I have a total of three, and then it says at most two. Now, what is our probability about? Well, we want the probability that the children are boys. Now, how many ways do you have to be a boy? Well, either you're born a boy or a girl. So I would say one out of two raised to the second. Remember, these are going to be the same. If you're a one out of two, then you fail one out of two times as well, raised to the first. Now, I just, I just want to be clear. If I stopped here, this would take care of the word exactly. Okay, but I have more than that. It says at most two. So what else could you have? If you said at most two boys, that means you can't have more than two boys, but you could have just one boy. So you have to run the same formula again. We're going to add on to it. Make sure you put a plus sign here. 3C1. So let me say that again. If I have at most two, okay, that's the most I can have. I can't have any more than two. I could also have just one. I could have anything less than that. So my probabilities aren't going to change just these numbers here. So this is going to be a one, one half to the second. Now let me keep thinking. If I said at most two, I could have two, I could have one, or in fact, I could even have None. So I have to add on another row here. 3C, 0. This would be 1 half to the 0, and then 1 half to the 3rd. And that's why that word at most is so important, that you understand which direction you're going. So I set up my exactly problem. Okay, At most 2 means I could have 2, 
I could have one or I could have none. Okay, notice my probabilities are not changing whatsoever. It's just going to be my combination and my exponents. So I just want to be clear. Make sure you have plus signs here. And here's how we're going to type it in. We're going to type each line in separately, and we're going to store this into alpha A. And then we'll type this line in, and we'll store it into alpha B. And then we'll type this line in and store it into alpha C. And once you have those three things in there, then we'll take our calculator and we'll just add our A plus B plus C to get our final answer. Now, why are we doing that? Well, remember, there's no intermediate rounding. You can't round these ugly decimals that you're going to get each time. That's why we use that store button. So take a few seconds, store each one in, and again, just, just type nice and slow because we can't really go back and give you partial credit for that. Just type nice and slow. Oops. So again, I typed just that first line I have in red here, stored it into alpha A. I went to math fraction and I got 3 eighths. I typed this second line in right here, stored it into alpha B. I did my math fraction and I got another 3 eighths. And then I did this last line, stored it into C. So this takes a few minutes, we know that. Stored that into C, hit math fraction and got 1 eighth. And then I'm just going to do, in my calculator, I'm literally typing A plus B plus C. And I get a total of 7 eighths. So remember, you can go fraction, decimal, or percent, um, but fractions probably are our nicest method of leaving it so we don't have any rounded answers. So 7 eighths. All right, let's try another one. Question two. Team A and Team B are playing in a league. They will play each other five times. Okay, so I'm just going to highlight that so five times right away. If the probability that Team A wins is one-third, what is the probability that Team A will win at least three of the next five games? All right, so keyword is at least. So I'm going to set up that formula, NCR, success to the R, failure to the N minus R. So I'm going to set up my exactly first, just my one line. It says they're going to play a total of five games and I'm looking for at least three. Okay, The probability that Team A will win a game is one-third raised to the third. And if it, they win one out of three times, then they fail two out of three times to the second. Okay, And if I stopped there, that took care of that word exactly. All right, But I have to go further because I don't see exactly. I see at least. All right, so here's where your common sense comes in. If you're going to get at least three, at least three, what else could you have? Could you have two? Hopefully you're saying no. At least three means the smallest amount is three. That means I have to go up. So I could have four. And again, I'm going to leave my probability as one-third, just changing my exponent. And that would be two-thirds to the first. I'm going to ask myself, can I go even further? If I had at least three, I could be three, I could be four, or I could go even to five. And whoops, let me go back and put my plus sign in there. Uh, five, five C five, leave those probabilities, don't mess with those, to the fifth, and then two thirds to the zero. Okay, now you are going to stop once these two numbers are the same when you're moving up. Notice 5C5, five I can't do 5C6, that answer would be zero. Um, so once these two numbers here are the same that I'm kind of circling, we stop there. So in this case, it's at at least three, so I could have three, and I could go up four or five. So again, you're just going to carefully, once you have the setup, you have the hard part out of the way, you're just going to carefully type each row in the calculator and store it into however many you have. So I'm going to store this answer into A, this answer into B, this answer into C, and then I'll add my A plus B plus C. So you'll see I wrote my probabilities off to the side here. I had 40 over 243, 10 over 243, and 1 over 243. I stored those into A, B, and C, and when I add them together, I get a total of 51 over 243. Okay. All right, so we've covered it at least. At most, let's try another one. On any given day, the probability the entire Watson family eats together is two-fifths. Find the probability that during any seven-day period, the Watsons will each, I'm sorry, will eat, eat, should say eat dinner together at least six times. Let's say eat dinner together 
at least six times. All right, so that's my NCR. Success to the R, failure to the N minus R. All right, pause me. Um, try the setup on your own, and uh, we'll see if we get the same thing. Catch that word at least. So really, again, try to pause it and set it up on your own. If you've got that, you've got the hard part out of the way. So I've got my first row there. It said during a total of seven, I want to happen at least six. Happens two-fifths, fails three-fifths. All right, if I can have at least six, the smallest, the least amount of six, I can go up. So I can have six or seven. And again, once those match, you're done. Oops, that should be to the seventh. And then three-fifths to the zero. And all we're simply going to do is add those two together and get our final answer. Again, I'm going to store this into A and store this into B. Um, now, once I put these in A and B, I noticed I couldn't get the, the calculator to turn it into a fraction, so I'm not going to write that down. Um, I will put my little decimal there approximately. I had my A, oops, what the heck was it? It was like 0 0.0172032, and my B was point. Oh, oh, one, six, three, eight, four. And when I added those together, I got a point oh one eight eight four one six. Okay, and again, if it doesn't tell me to round, I'm not rounding that number. And I've got my answer. So just be real cautious to whether it says at least, at most, or exactly. All right, we've made it to our last question for the evening. Um, as shown in the accompanying diagram, a circular target with a radius of 9 inches has a bullseye with a radius of 3 inches. If five arrows randomly hit the target, what is the probability at least four will hit the bullseye? All right, so if it says at least four, that's 5C4, and of course there's more there, I'm going to add on to it. Which direction are you going to go when you hear the word at least? If you are at least 4, least, lowest amount is 4, you could also have 5C5. All right, so I just want to be clear about just that setup there. I could have 4 or 5. And again, I'm going to stop once these two are equal. All right, now, the probabilities here aren't given right off the bat. So we're going to have to think about this. I want to be the probability that I actually hit the bullseye, that I land inside this circle. So think about this. This one's a little sneakier. If you want to be inside, anywhere inside that circle, you're talking about the what of a circle. If you're covering the inside, hopefully you're guessing the area of a circle. And if you think back to your geometry, our area is pi r squared. All right? So I want the probability that I land inside that circle. So I'm going to say the probability I land inside the circle is going to be pi times 3 squared, that's the area of the circle, divided by the whole circle out of pi times 9 squared. All right, so I'm just doing my probability. The, the part I want to be in is this area of the circle and the part of the entire circle. And if I clean that up a little, get, a little bit, I'm going to get pi 9, or 9 pi, divided by pi times 81, or 81 pi. I can kill those pies, because anything on the top and bottom reduces to 1. And 9 out of 81 is really 1 ninth. So the probability that I land inside this bullseye here is 1 ninth. And I'm going to say to the fourth. Therefore, if I land inside 1 out of 9 times, I fail 8 out of 9 times to the first. And I'm going to keep my probabilities. I'm only changing the exponents. Okay, and again, once you've got this set up here, uh, it's pretty much just plug and chug in your calculator. I'll let you do that part on your own, um, but we're really just focusing on this setup, and if you've got that, then you're in great shape, and um, I think that does it for tonight. So again, come with questions tomorrow, and just focus on that word at least and at most in which direction you're going to travel. Have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow.